Hello, Sandy Trefker here with a tutorial video and project for Country Craft Creations using PhotoPlay's Aloha Paper Collection. I'm measuring out the album to show you that it is a good large size. It measures 11 by 11 inches. It has a curved spine and it also has an optional belly band closure. This is so that if you're giving it to someone and they don't want all the decorative flowers that are on the belly band, they want to store the album on a shelf, it can be taken off and they can keep the album plain and set the belly band aside. Since I love decorative stuff, I decided to put this on there and then the recipient can actually take it off. So when we open up the album on the inside, on the inside cover, I've added an envelope that I created with my uh, envelope punch board and I have magnet closures so they can store tickets and maps and different little things maybe they've collected on their vacation and it also has a pocket at the top where I have put some extra cut aparts but other things can be put in there as well. On page one we have a flap here, a Hawaii flap that lifts up for two photo mats. It also is held closed with a magnet. I just like the added look of the string kinda looks like Hawaii to me. Uh, sea and ocean and stuff like that. So then the top one opens up and it has a journaling box and a small Instagram photo uh, mat. The front flap lifts up for two photo mats. There's one photo mat on the front of the bottom flap and then on the inside there's two flaps on the main page and two flaps on the inside. I mean two fat mats on the inside of the flap. I'm going to turn the page. I have photo flips fold outs that will hold one, two, three, four, five, seven, seven photos that folds back up, held closed with a magnet, and the one at the top will hold the same number of photos, so it folds up towards the top. And it is also held closed with a magnet. On the next page, we have a pocket where a booklet comes out that has two square photo mats on the inside. And then on the pocket, I've added three flaps, which are photo mat flaps. I also have a belly band on the front where I put a little cut apart there. So you open it up, you have one, two, three, four, five, six photo mat. Now these do have the corners punched with a uh, where you can insert your photos. On the next page, we have fold outs that will hold three photos. And then I put a large photo mat on the next page for like an 8 by 10. Also inside on each four page there is a large photo mat. I left these plain. You can add more if you need them for any different size photos that you might want to add into the uh, pocket sleeves on the pages. The next page this unties. It is held closed with a magnet but it is a waterfall so on the inside of the flaps I have the photo mats with the punched corners and then I have just the patterned waterfall flaps so they could put different sizes square photos or smaller ones on those for the next page I have another pocket it has a photo flat for two photos on it there are two photos on the left side of the pocket and then I created photo mats with the photo cutter corner punch onto the tags. This one's stuck a little bit so I'll need to pull it out and press that down. The sticker real good. So I used flowers to create and a scallop circle punch to create the finishing embellishment on those tags. And on page 8, the last page, we have this flap. Now it did flap open. I uh, didn't quite like that so you might want to add an extra tie on yours to keep it closed but this does have a magnet and it flips open you have two mats in the side flaps, then you have four mats on the center of the page and two mats on the top flap and two on the bottom flap. And then lastly, I added another waterfall to the inside back cover. And so it is made just like the other one. It unties with magnet closure, flips down. We have a photo mat in the bottom flap on the inside one on the top. I also had a little belly band I added here for the cut apart. So if you have a photo mat here at the top and then you have the waterfalls that are just covered with patterned paper. I kept the back side plain. Let's 
So that's the album, uh, the completed walkthrough of the album. And next I'm going to share with you the supplies that I used from Country Craft Creations. And then we'll get started on part one of the video. I'm going to divide this up at least into two parts. So we're going to get the basic construction of the album going here in part one. So there's the plain cover of the album. So now let's go into the supply list. In my designer kit from Country Craft Creations, I got the 12 by 12 sticker sheet from Photo Play, the Aloha collection, and I used every sticker on there except for one. I have this assortment of pretty ribbons that I may use some or all. And then from Country Craft Creations, I got the 12 by 12 papers from the Aloha collection. Again, these are by Photo Play, and I received two of each pattern that comes with the collection. And because this is a very large album with lots of areas to pattern, I did order extra from Country Craft Creations so that I could complete this gift album. And I will list down below in the description the total amount of pattern papers that I used or that I ordered, and I did use all of it. Um, you may want a different number of certain patterns, so you just want the overall total, and you pick and choose how many you want of each one, because it all goes together beautifully, but you may like one more than the other. I also got two 12 by 12 chipboards to make my covers, and I did order separately the Royal Blue, or rather it's called the Denim Blue cardstock, the Artisan cardstock from Country Craft Creations, and I also ordered a white uh, set that I used on this album. You will also need a Tyvek, piece of Tyvek material to cut for the spine. This you can get online or at your office supply. And I also will have flowers that I use from my stash. Now we need to go ahead and get started on our tutorial. And we will cut the chipboards down to 11 inches by 11 inches. And we need two pieces of pattern paper that we selected that are 12 inch by 12 inch. I'm going to use the Art Glitter designer dries clear glue that I purchased from countrycraftcreations.com this is my favorite glue I use it almost exclusively on my projects I will use a little bit of score tape so you will want to have some of that on hand as well and if you prefer score tape that is just fine so what I'm doing here is I'm laying down a good amount of glue on one side of one of the chipboard pieces that have been cut down to 11 inch by 11 inch to create this album cover uh, I'll show you the doing the cover, front cover, and then also um, you will do your back cover the exact same way. We're not going to assemble the cover at this time. We're just prepping it, getting the covers wrapped so that we don't make a mistake and use up the pretty paper that we want specifically for our cover. Now on the back side you're going to place this down and you're going to leave because the chipboard is about 11 by 11. You don't have much work space to work so about three quarter, three eighths to three quarters of an inch space around all four corners on this, and then turn it over and burnish the front side to make sure that all the bubbles from the glue have spread out and are laying down flat. So you want to make sure that it lays down really good. And here I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing now with the back piece. Okay, so we have the paper attached, but we haven't wrapped it yet, and since it's directional paper on the front, I'm marking the word top on each chipboard piece so that I don't get mixed up later on. Take the chipboard and stand it up onto the cardstock, the edges that are sticking out, and just fold. This gives you a nice crease there where you're going to be wrapping and folding, and then really crease the corner lines and take your scissors and cut out a square at each corner. I will show you just a second. Let me get this cut on this first one first. I'm going to show you exactly what I've cut out. This is the easiest way to miter your corners for your covers and you'll like how it lays down really flat. This is a, a great idea of how to do this. Um, I've seen others do it so I know that Tamara does it with Country Craft Creations and so it really works well for me rather than trying to matter a different way. 
Next I'm taking my glue and I'm applying a line of glue right along the chipboard edge onto the cardstock paper and then I'm doing a circular motion of adding glue along the complete entire flap of pattern cardstock and I'm using my hands and a dry wipe to hold and burnish that down. So this will give you a really nice clean folded edge on your covers and you're going to do work on one side at a time and do all four and I'm going to do the same thing for both of the chipboard pieces. We've wrapped both of the chipboard pieces for the covers and set those aside for now. And now we're going to make hinges out of cardstock. We need to cut five that are ten and a half inches by two inches. So I've already pre-cut mine and I have my scoreboard and I'm going to put one in at the two inch side at the top of the scoreboard. And I'm going to go ahead and write that down for you so that you can visually see it. We're going to score the two inch side at three quarters of an inch and one and one quarter inch. We'll do that on all five of the cardstock pieces that are cut ten and a half inches by two inches. So I have the two inch side in at the top line it up and I'm going to score at three quarters of an inch and at one and one quarter inch. This will create a hinge that has three quarters inch hinge on each side with a half inch gusset in the middle. And we will use these to attach our pages together. So I'm just burnishing this. So I'm burnishing the score line, the two score lines toward each other so that we have three quarter inch flaps that stand up for the hinge and a half inch space in the middle that's down flat. So this is what one hinge will look like. And you're going to do this to all five of your hinges. Now we need to cut cardstock to create base pages. We're going to cut six at ten and a half inches by ten and a half inches. Do not score these. These are the base pages that will attach to the hinges. You'll actually have four that will become pages and two, one for the front and one for the back, are what will attach to the chipboard covers of the album. So you have your five hinges that you've uh, scored and burnished and folded and we're ready to attach them onto a page. So I have my first page here and I have one of the hinges. I'm going to apply glue to just one side of the three quarter inch section. So I'm applying in a circular motion glue onto just one of the three quarter inch spaces. Then I will take this hinge and attach that three quarter inch section down onto the page lining up the fold line up against the cut edge of the page and then burnish that down. So you still have a three quarter inch space that's loose and you have your half inch space that's free. So I'm burnishing on the opposite side to make sure that it did stick down good. You want these to stick really well. Fold the hinge and you're going to apply glue right here to the other three quarter inch space and we'll attach this down onto the second page that we have cut. So this is the second one and actually it's easier if you turn it over and do it from the top. So you're attaching the fold line right along to the cut line of the page. Now it doesn't matter which side of a loose page that you attach this to because they're all the same size. They're a square. So attach it down and burnish. 
line it up make sure your pages did line up in case you need to refold any of your score lines just double check and make sure that they are uh, even the pages and burnish that inside so you will see you have the three quarter inch spaces attached to each page and you have the half inch in between and so it should look like this at this point now we're going to attach another hinge to this page set so you, this is where you need to pay attention and make sure you're attaching your hinge to the same side as, side as where the other hinge was attached so applying glue again to the three quarter inch space and the fold line will attach down along the same edge right along the cut edge of the page but it is on the same side as where your previous hinge was attached so you're going to build this up you're going to attach two pages together with a hinge attach a hinge on the same side and then you're going to attach your third page onto this second hinge that we've just added going to fold it, take another page, apply glue to the three quarter inch space, attach it to the loose page, lining it up on the cut edge. burnish it and now we have three pages attached together and we have two half inch spaces to our page set so we're going to keep adding the hinges you will add another hinge now and then you will add a page and keep doing this until all six are attached together you will end up with five hinges attaching six pages together now we're going to stabilize our hinges we're going to cut one cardstock ten and a half inch by two and a half inch and one pattern cardstock the same size ten and a half inch by two and a half inch minor pre-cut no scoring on these. You will take your page set that has the six pages attached together by the hinges and we're going to flatten these hinges down to make sure to score uh, burnish over them with your bone folder to make sure they're down really scored down good and I am using score tape I'm using 3 8 inch score tape on these so that glue a lot of glue doesn't um, ooze down in between my score lines and my hinges I uh, just think that this might work better at this step so I'm going to add that so go ahead and apply your score tape one to each back of the hinge each section of the hinge the half inch sections peel the tape backing off And I have a couple little places on the end where there's no adhesive so I'm just going to apply a little bit of glue right on the end and then in just a few couple little places I think down the side where the tape where I didn't get the tape on some of it not a whole lot because I don't want it ooze down into the hinges so I'm just applying a little bit to where there is no adhesive then I'm taking the solid cardstock piece that we cut and if you cut it correct it should exactly fit over all these hinges so make sure you line it up really straight on the bottom and on the sides and burnish that down 
So this will give some strength and stability to the back side of these hinges. These will not be attached to the spine area of your cover because we're going to have a rounded spine, but you do want this to be really secure and stable and stay straight. Now the pattern piece of paper that we cut is going to go over this piece here, and I'm going to show you right quick. When these hinges are straight on the left side, all your pages should be even on the right. So when it's standing up, I'm just double checking all the score lines and see how it stands up and those are this is our page set we have four pages in the center and the front one and the back one will be what we use to attach to the chipboard covers so I'm going to flatten this back down again and I want a pattern paper so that when you look down from the top of your album and, and see into the curved spine that that back side is pretty and has some pattern paper and it matches the back side of the spine. I am using glue on the back side of this patterned paper piece and then I'm carefully going to place it down over the solid cardstock that we just put over the hinges. So this is just hiding that and making it kind of match with the album so that when you look down in that spine area you will see this pattern paper. So burnish that. Make sure you get it nice and smooth. And now we're ready to work on some pocket sleeves and adding some flips and flaps and pockets into our pages. For our page pocket sleeves, we need to cut four out of cardstock, 11 and a half inches by 10 and 3 eighths inches, and score the 11 and 1 half inch side at a half inch and 11 inch. So I've pre-cut mine. I have the scoreboard ready. Put the 11 and a half inch side into the scoreboard at the top. Score at 11 inch and then move over and score at a half inch. And you will do this to all four of these cardstock pieces that you cut to 11 and a half inches by 10 and 3 eighths inches. So this is what will create our pocket sleeves for our base pages. Fold and burnish all the score lines on these four sleeves. You'll want them to go the same direction so that you have a half inch hinge on the same side on each side of these sleeves and just make sure you burnish them really well. I like to do it on both sides especially if you're using the artisan cardstock you want to burnish both sides of these. So you'll do this for all four uh, prepping them to get ready to attach them to the four pages of the album. get your page sets that you've already stabilized the spine for and remember that the first page the first one is actually an attachment piece that goes attaches to the cover so the second one here is our first page so we have four pages the last one is also an attachment for the back cover so open it up like this so that you can see the second page and you're going to attach your one of your photo sleeves to each of the four pages. So we're going to work on this one first. I was looking at it to see if opening it up would help, but I think the best way is to take a piece of uh, white cardstock. I'm going to use my Tyvek. I'm just going to lay it underneath the second page so that it makes it white around it so that I can actually see where the page ends. So this will make it a lot easier that way. And then you're going to apply glue. Now you decide do you want your sleeved open at the top or the side. Mine's going to open to the right side. Of course you don't want it opening to the left side because that's toward the spine and you couldn't get anything out. So either to the top 
are to the right side. So I'm going to attach mine this way. So I'm going to turn it over and I'm just going to put glue on one hinge, the top hinge. And then I'm going to attach it down by lining it up. You want to line up the right side edge, the right corner, and make it straight, the fold line of the sleeve, right along the cut line of the page. So make sure that you line it up straight and burnish that down. And this should put this sleeve about a sixteenth of an inch away from the fold line of the actual album. Then lift it up and burnish the top of half inch hinge piece there at the top. And then you're going to go ahead and apply glue to the bottom half inch. And then put a thin line of glue along the left bottom side of the sleeve all the way down to the fold. And then you're going to fold it down onto the base page, line it up on the corners and along the edge, burnish that, line it up, burnish that, and you're also going to make sure you burnish the uh, bottom's edge or the edge towards the seam right here towards the hinge of your album. So you're going to burnish that to close that up. And this makes a pocket sleeve. And you're going to do this on all of your four pages. So you have three more to, to do after this one. And I will show you how it looks in just a second. So when you open that up, there's your pocket sleeve. So all four of the sleeves are attached. Remember there is not one on the very first page. I put that in quotations and one to the very last because these are attachments to the cover. So you have the four in the middle here all have a, a photo sleeve attached. So now we're ready to move on and work on some different pages and elements in our album. Before we start working on the pages and pockets and flaps, we're going to go ahead and do our curved spine piece. We're not going to put it together yet. We're just going to prep it so that it can set. Um, you're going to want to go ahead and cut from Tyvek and from pattern paper. You want two pieces of pattern paper that you're going to cut. I have pre-cut mine. Cut your Tyvek to six and a half inches by eleven inches and then two pieces of pattern cardstock the same size, six and a half inches by eleven inches each. What we will do is sandwich these together with the Tyvek in the center. So I'm applying glue to the Tyvek piece on one side only. and then attach it to the back side of one of the pieces of the pattern paper. Now I'm attaching it, I'm putting it to the pineapple side because I want the pink to be the part that shows on the back of the spine so that it matches what I put on the back of the hinges. So just make sure you get it on straight. You do have a few minutes to move the tie back around. It does pull up pretty easy to get it on straight. If you can't get it perfectly straight on the edges, you can trim it off as long as it's just the tie back that's sticking out. You don't want to trim off any of your paper. So it doesn't matter if it's not all the way covered on, right up to the edges, but you do want to get it on as smooth as possible. So burnish that really well. And check the other side. And now I'm going to put glue on the side with the birds because I want the green leaves to be the outer part of my curved spine. This is the part that will show from the outside of the album. So I want that to be the green. So I'm applying a line of glue all the way around all the edges and then squiggle marks of glue on the center. And again I'm going to stick it down onto the tie back and let that uh, attach down and smooth it out with my bone folder to make sure that it's nice and smooth. 
Now at this point, uh, we don't want to curve it yet. We want to let it dry really well. And we're just going to set this aside with the chipboard album covers. We won't be assembling this until later on uh, after we've done the pages and different flaps and things. So I'm going to end this video now. I don't want it too long. So this is part one of the tutorial video for the Aloha photo album. In video two, we'll start working on the um, assembly of some pockets and flaps and things for the album. Uh, so uh, stay tuned and check back soon. I'll have video two up as soon as I can. Thanks. Bye-bye.